Sky VTS hauler. Uh, I shopped around, saw several uh, similar devices, like the notch, uh, the notch log cart, or the not, or the Stein Arbor trolley. The notch log cart started out with bigger tires. I liked how it had the flotation tires. That, that seemed pretty cool. Um, but it uh, it did require the extra plate purchase for almost a hundred bucks, and uh, it was about six hundred bucks. I missed the window of opportunity. Uh, sometime in April or May, early April, they had it for half price at a lot of different places, um, and and now it's not even available. So when I called the company and was like, "Hey, does anybody have it in stock?" Uh, and yeah, nobody had it in stock, and one company thought that it's because they were coming out with a second model. So that seemed kind of cool, but but I didn't really want to wait around for that. I had a lot of jobs where I couldn't really get my skid loader back into somebody's yard. You can hear it's raining right now, so lawns are wet. Uh, so it's moving heavy material is really uh, kind of a challenge when you know lawns are nice and you don't want to tear them up. So uh, the other option was the Stein Arbor trolley. Uh, Reg Coates invented that. Uh, the guy's brilliant. Um, and I saw a lot of a lot of things similar between this and that, uh, but again, the Stein Arbor trolley doesn't have the plate to use it, kind of like a dolly. And the LogRide BTS actually includes the plate, uh, from what I understand. I haven't opened it yet, but it includes the plate. But the one advantage that I saw with the Stein is that it's lighter by quite a bit, uh, whereas the uh, the notch I think it's like 70 or 80 pounds. Whereas the, the Notch Harbor Trolley is about 150. Um, but I was looking at this and I've got three, it came in three packages. And uh, UPS had the weight identified on each of the shipping stickers. And uh, this one here says 30 pounds, the small one. Uh, and then this next one, it says uh, 76 pounds. And then this one's 68 pounds. So for a grand total of 174 pounds. So I understand that that includes like the plate, which would add weight that you wouldn't necessarily have as the, you know, the, the if you're using it as like the, the branch or the brush hauler. But uh, but it is it does mean that it's a little bit more weight. Now the one thing that the BTS hauler had is that uh, wheel up front, which there's a, a couple of UK only models that have a front wheel, and I can see how that'd be helpful if you're hauling across concrete or something like that. But grass, I'm not really sure. So I'm curious to see if it's something that I can still use it as a brush hauler, but I can take off that front wheel, or maybe if the front wheel really isn't an issue. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll see what we have inside of these boxes, and we'll put it together. BTS hauler from the company LogRide, which is who I purchased from LogRide Tools, uh, came in at 590, which was actually a little bit cheaper than both the Notch and the Stein. Uh, but the shipping to ship these three boxes UPS uh, was 137. So shipped to my door, uh, the bill invoice was for 727 dollars 78. cents So. Uh, I don't, know, I don't even know if I really saved a whole lot. I think it's pretty comparable with the other, the other Arbor trolleys. But looking at a lot of the reviews on YouTube, I really like the quality that their uh, log arches are compared to other brands, say like Notch or any one of them. Uh, they seem to be pretty well made. And Notch, made in China. The Stein Arbor trolley, pretty sure that's made in Canada. This is the only brush hauler that I found that was actually made in the U.S. So, uh, if they all came in equal, that was enough to tip me in this direction. Alright, so this first box has yeah, the four side posts for holding the brush in. Same diameter at both ends. So 
second box has has the tongue. I'm guessing this is where the handle attaches, and that attaches to the like the breastbone, the the rail that runs down the middle. Unpainted galvanized. Maximum load 745 pounds. Uh, it's got bearings in there. Got some grease on them. Uh, and they are air tires. They've got the air chuck and it says tubeless. So I've kind of been toying around with the idea of putting like foam in them. So that way, if I do end up blowing a tire, it's not going to bring things to a grinding halt. And I did not purchase the float tires, the wider float tires, I think that was an extra 78 bucks. Um, I don't know how much that would have increased the amount of effort it would have took to pull the car, but uh, I'm just curious to see what um, what the small tires were, and then I figured I could always upgrade to the wide tires if I end up cutting quite a few ruts and lawns. I don't haul a lot of super heavy stuff. But uh, it's usually just the brush that we're having a hard time managing. But uh, I mean, these are a little bit wider than your average dolly tire. But uh, the specs on the tire are uh, 4.80 slash 4.00 hyphen 8. So pretty, pretty standard dimensions. If you can look that up, you can get what the dimension, of the, the width of the actual tire is. But it's big enough that uh, it should roll over bumps pretty easy without getting stopped up. <coughs> All right, here's the main part of the handle. heavy gauge metal, I can see where uh, it would, the weight is higher, just because it's not, uh, it's not the kind of, you know, pipe tubing that a bunk bed is made out of, it's, this is pretty, pretty stout stuff, so I can appreciate that, and there's that dolly wheel, that front dolly wheel, and gosh, that's like eight inches in diameter, oh, it's this, uh, yeah, SR, SER8, so that's an 8 inch wheel. And it almost looks like it's a cradle that a pin goes through, so I bet I can remove this if I'm not really wanting that. That's nice. Uh, I got this packed like a Chinese puzzle from America. Alright, oh, and there's the foot plate. That's stiff diamond plate. It's at least a quarter inch thick. I like the diamond plate. You might keep logs from slipping around. It's, it's got a couple holes in the end. Maybe I could put like a bungee or a strap through there, keep something from rolling off. That's pretty nice. Parts and manual. Should we use the manual? But if we read the manual here, it'd save you later. All right, there's the manual. I like how they put it in a Ziploc bag. I was there when the UPS guy arrived, but I suppose if the UPS guy comes when you're away and it rains, they'll keep that in good shape. And then uh, a bunch of lock pins, and it looks like they're spring loaded. Doesn't look like it needs any tools. That's kind of nice. Not having to use a whole lot of tools. 
see a couple hex keys that I wonder if I actually have to use. Yeah, but I do have to set some stuff up with those. Everything here is wrapped in this phone wrap. So that's nice. Keeps the paint in good shape. I mean, it's here, these parts are bright blue, so I don't think I'm going to end up leaving those behind because I can't see them. female on the other. And here's the oh, here's the axle part. That's yeah, not really that light. And it includes it said See that? It says an extra large gear bag wrapped to it. Wrap around tubular webbing handles, detachable carry strap. Wonder what this is for. Wonder if it mentions it in the manual. I can't imagine you'd be carrying uh, this whole thing inside of this. Really big duffel bag with a shoulder strap. Huh. I wonder what they want me to use that for. And that was uh, strapped to the, the main portion of the frame. So on the main portion of the frame, right on the axle, there's a, a strip of self-adhesive sandpaper that they put on there. I wonder if that's for like if you're kicking off when, when it's in log dolly mode, so that you're not slipping on that, because that, that powder coated or painted surface, but that'd be pretty slip, slippery if you got a little mud on your feet. And uh, there is a serial number on it. Made in the USA. So I suppose if you ever got it stolen, uh, you'd, you'd be able to track it by the serial number. Alright. What else? Thank you. 
for using our product. It's got a warranty, period of two years. Doesn't apply any liability. Okay. There's a checklist for parts. It's got the serial number right on here, so you don't need to copy it over. You can just stick this in your records and you're good. And uh, it's got the initials of the people that packed the boxes. It's got the owner's manual. Trying to put it together. All right, so we'll start with the wheels. All right, so insert axle shaft in the wheel. And I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the valve stem in. I think I'm less likely to shear it off running into something. And then there's a a clamping collet, and I think that's supposed to. So you're, you don't actually clamp the, the bearing tight, so tight that it rubs hard. It's got a grease zerk on the bearing, so you can grease those bearings without having to slide the axle out. All right, so slide the axle shaft collar under the axle shaft until it lightly touches and then tighten with a 5.32nd Allen wrench. Like. Smallest down wrench on that one. It's too big. backwards I put the tire tire chuck on the outside. Oops. Kind of like put the chainsaw chain on backwards. As long as you catch it in time. is to insert them into the axle tube of the frame and lock in place with a 5 16 spring loaded locking pin. So, two of these guys. Snug fit, but it gets in there. All right.
decide, do we want a hand truck or do we want a cart? Uh, let's do the let's do the truck, the the, the dolly. It's first. All right. Place frame of fenders on foot plate. Foot plate comes first. Slides in kind of like a hitch. It's a two inch, almost two inch opening. Like so, and it shows pin with a bent hitch pin. So it's got these spring loaded hitch pins. So you slide it through and then you pull it out and it locks. I don't know if you can see that. It locks at a right angle. Slides it through, you pull out, twist and then it locks back. Now, all right, so plan, slide the plated bar through the slot in the elbow. There's our handle. See, I'm hooking this a whole lot. I think I tightened it a little too tight on the right. We'll be able to adjust that pretty easy. So that's the that's the love cart. Not perfectly level if you lay it down like that. It tips that way just a little bit, but I think that's just fine. And then feels pretty good.
dolly. Goes there. Uh, the dolly clamps a little wide, but not wide enough to go on the larger part. So it looks like. That might be fixed with a pin. Now the picture shows the smaller end going in in there, and I think that's really nice for being able to fit through those little gates. But as I was waiting for this package to arrive. I thought, what if you put the longer end inside, because okay. so you see, see how that, you got a width of, uh, hold on, inside diameter you're looking at 30, between 30 and 31 inches inside diameter. But what if you took and you stuck the longer end in there? It's a little shorter, but not, not more than an inch. You're a little bit wider. You, yeah, you need a bigger walkway. So if you had to go through a narrow area, you'd need that. But between 30 and 31, now you're at 40 inches, so you just bought yourself another 9 inches of area that you can stack brush or logs. You know, I think I might be doing that more. I thought about like wrapping, you know, reflective tape around that, but if I'm going to use it like back and forth, I might wrap the tape down a little lower so that way I can slide it in and out and it's not going to scuff it up. Because both slide in there a good three inches. So I'll probably put the tape about three inches down or, or I could just like spray some high vis paint around that so you know you're at, your ground you don't just walk right into it. Sometimes the glasses get clogged up in those human days. So, I don't know. I like it and honestly that, that, that caster, that crazy wheel in the front, it's bigger than I expected it to be. So, I'm curious, I'll give it a try. But, uh, I, I, I mean, I think something there is necessary, so that way you're, when you set it down, it isn't just pitching really far forward. But, uh, but I think a foot plate uh, isn't really a great idea either, because like if you're rolling over a dirt hump, uh, you're just going to scuff out the dirt. Where here, the crazy wheel is at least something, and then later in the day, you just end up using rolling on that wheel. But that wheel is a lot smaller than the other, so of course you're going to succumb to bumps a lot easier. I'm really excited. Uh, been hauling a lot of brush lately, and I don't use a chipper, I use a dump trailer, so um, I'm really hoping this will speed things up, make for a lot less trips. We had that derecho roll through here uh, about a little more than three weeks ago, and I had blood blisters by the end of the end of the week and I, I'm hoping this keeps that from happening more than more than usual so I don't know I'll be excited though how it how it performs seems to move pretty easy doesn't feel I mean right now it doesn't feel like it's 170 pounds those wheels roll pretty easy so I'll get her greased up and first uh, non rainy day we have we'll try it out 
Thanks, guys.